crashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Will Drum for Food. My name is Jeff. This is my show where I talk about whatever it is I feel like talking about. I got my cell phone. I got some issues with my webcam, so that, that's out of the picture. I got my coffee. It's Monday, so let's get going. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I'm doing really good. You know, I went and saw uh, Steel Panther last night. Uh, if you got, Steel Panther is the greatest act for our hypersensitive political climate right now because these guys don't give a crap. I mean, they are so vulgar, so incredibly hilarious, and they're actually really, really outstanding musicians. Outstanding. Danny Musician, Satchel, the guy that plays guitar, what an incredible guitar player. The drummer, uh, Sticks, who I don't know his real name, he's fantastic. Actually, um, a, a guy that played drums for them um, at one point was a guy named, I'm not sure, I think it's Ray Luzier, Luzier, L-U-Z-I-A-R. He's actually Korn's drummer right now. Um, he played with them for a while uh, when they were first getting started. Uh, I think he did it between tours like with David Lee Roth and somebody else. So, I mean, if you ever get the chance to go see Steel Panther, man, go see him. I mean, they are hilarious. So, uh, Christmas is drawing near. I played a gig on um, Thursday night, and uh, Santa Claus actually showed up. This is this guy was Santa Claus. He was really Santa Claus. He's actually playing Santa Claus. Well, he's not playing Santa Claus. I guess he's playing himself. He's uh, going to be on the Christmas episode of Chicago Fire. He, he told me he just got done shooting it. And I, I know the guy. He lives around uh, Santa Claus. Um, he lives around my area. Uh, a, a, a kid that I know talked about him all the time. He's like in commercials. He's like Sears commercials. He's like the Santa Claus and all the and the Sears ads and stuff like that. So uh, I played a song with him. I wish I would have got video of it. I was playing drums. So I can't really get my camera out. Uh, the song was called Dead Skunk in the Middle of the Road, a song that I never knew existed. And it turns out Santa Claus is real. So it's very ironic. Uh, and, you know, it's it's winter here. Uh, I like the setup, by the way. Uh, this is something I'm trying new. I'm trying. I'm sitting on a couch trying to be a little more relaxed, thinking maybe I'll be less hyper and less twitchy. Uh, just by, I got the camera on... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the FaceTime camera or whatever, so I can look at myself talking. And apparently, it's not working because I am uh, I'm twitching all over this video. Uh, well, the new setup here. I just, you know, I'm on a couch. I'm in my living room, trying to be a little more relaxed. Uh, we'll see if this works. Uh, so, uh, snow. Oh, snow. Yeah, it's 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 winter. It's winter, so we're starting to get snow. And like, you know, the song says, "Dashing through the snow." You should never dash through the snow. It's dangerous extremely dangerous which uh, you know i was coming home from a gig on friday night and we got oh man we got about two inches of snow which is what i call it like i i, I used to snowmobile a lot and i what i would call two inches of snow is just enough to screw everything up it's not enough to enjoy it, it's just it's it's just a pain it's just a pain so two inches of snow is just a pain uh but it, it's enough to make the road slick and uh as I was driving home from a gig, there was a guy, or a girl, I don't know. It was, it was a big four-wheel drive pickup truck. Uh, jacked up the knobby snow tires, all that, all that crap, in the ditch. Uh, so he was, you know, it, it, it happens a lot. You get the big four-wheel drive vehicle, and you think you can plow right through the snow. You see the commercials, and, the, you know, they're driving through the snow, and no worries. No, it doesn't work that way. Snow is slippery. And it is a better equipment. It is it is a it's a better vehicle to have in that kind of situation. But if you don't have the know how how to drive that vehicle correctly, you can easily put it in the ditch. Which leads me to today's subject. Today's drum related subject, which is having the right equipment for the job, does not necessarily make you a better drummer. I'm sure a lot of you already know that, but. Just in case you don't, <laughs> I have uh, um, I have a kid I give lessons to. 
Um, and and the drum set in our the, like the the two drum sets that are in the lesson room, they're great drum set. One's a Gretsch, one's a Pearl, and then they have top of the line, top of the line A custom Zildjian A customs and K cymbals, and and uh, regular A's. So these are these are really good cymbals. This kid, I've been trying to break him of this habit for going on two years now. When he hits this cymbal, all right, we all know what uh, a K dark, or most of us should know what a, take, a K dark crash sounds like. It's a very dark, you know, n not a brittle sound at all. Somehow, when he hits it, he gets the worst tone I've ever heard out of a cymbal in my life. And the reason it, it sounds like that is because when he comes down on it, you know, like I said, I've been trying to break him of this forever. And he, he does, he, he does, he's doing better, but he starts to forget about it and he, he gets back to his old habits. But when he comes down, he actually hits the top of the symbol. Like, like, so if this is the symbol and I'm going to grab this example, of this, <laughs> this, this Amazon remote is the stick. When he comes down and he hits the symbol, he doesn't strike it like this. What he does is he strikes it with the entire length of the symbol across, or the entire length of the stick across the symbol, and it makes the most oh god awful horrendous sound. So, it, 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 but so what he's doing is is you you can take you can take the best gear, and if you put a drummer behind that gear who doesn't have the knowledge how to play that gear correctly, it's not going to sound good. Uh, you know. I think it's very important that drummers <clears throat> don't pay too much attention to the gear, okay? Because I've got one of my favorite drum sets is um, it is a Ludwig rocker kit that I bought for a hundred dollars at Musical Round, and I put a new wrap on it and new heads on it. The kit sounds fantastic. This is by no means a top-of-the-line drum set. And part of the reason why it sounds good is, number one, is, is the heads. I got the correct heads on it. Uh, but number two is, I know how to hit this drum. I know how to hit drums to get the correct sound out of them. Because I've got the experience, the level, and the know-how to pull the sound I want out of a particular drum. Um, you could take the worst drum set the worst most piece of crap awful drum set put new heads on it tune it correctly and put a drummer behind the kit that knows how to hit it correctly and it will sound good equipment great equipment is awesome it's gr it's awesome to have nice gear but you don't need the best gear to become a uh, 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 to to become a good drummer it doesn't that doesn't make any difference man it makes no difference. You don't need the best gear to sound good. A, a good drummer can make bad equipment sound good. But good equipment will never make a bad drummer sound good. Simple as that. All right, guys. I will catch you next week. Uh, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell. Uh, if you like these videos, I will talk to you next time.